Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by Winamp. Subscribe to the Daily Gizwiz and all your favorite podcasts with the ultimate media player. Download it for free at winamp.com. Video bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's time for the Daily Gizwiz with Mad's maddest writer, Dick T. Bartolo. This is episode 1239 for Thursday, December 9th, 2010, the USB typewriter. The Daily Gizwiz is brought to you by Ford and the new 2011 Ford Edge. It grabs attention as well as it grabs the road and features available My Ford Touch to connect you to your vehicle in new and innovative ways. The 2011 Ford Edge. Drive one this week at a Ford dealer near you. And now, get ready for Dick. It's time for the Thursday theme. Hit it. I like to begin the Thursday show because, you know, we've been doing, you know, four or five shows now. We're kind of rolling to the end of the week, and sometimes the energy lags. So I like to begin the Thursday show with a big bang, and there you go from Dan Luters, the rock and roll gizwiz. I smell coffee. Am I ADHD? I think so. I smell coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just make a little coffee? Oh, is it that cat poop coffee? Mm, it's oh, that cat poop word. coffee. That shh, that's going to be my uh, my pick for Tuesday. Oh, okay. <clears throat> cat poop coffee. You're not coffee. hearing anything from me. You're not hearing anything. From How are me. you, Dickie D? I'm super, and you? Oh, I'm in fine fettle. But soon oh. I hope to get back to Petaluma and uh, continue the show. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. That's why we're recording ahead because you're going to fine fettle for about a week, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have a nice time there. Uh, we're gonna see the fettle tower. Oh, are you going to the Fettle Fiddle Festival? <laughs> it's very fine, Fettle Festival. Oh, the, uh, yeah. It's my favorite. <laughs> by the way, Dan Luters is in the chat room, a rare appearance by the star of the Daily oh. Gizwiz Jingle Army. Oh, it's great. Isn't we love great? his stuff. Yeah, love his stuff. He's a bassist by trade, uh, performs, I think, oh, in a let's church. Not put him down for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, bassist, but they're, they're only one step up from drummers. Who are the, oh. the lowest of the low? Now Dan's, oh, okay. Dan is very talented, very uh, wonderful musician, and we thank him for many of our uh, jingles. Not all of them. Uh, Paul Minshall did a few, and uh, Mark Blasco did the uh, the Gizwiz theme song. Uh, uh, who was the Brit that did some stuff for us? Hollywood. No, he's from Britain. He was uh, oh Will. Jo I want to say George Will, but I know that's wrong. Anyway, there's quite a few really great talented people who've done some stuff for us. Oh, yeah. George Wood. Oh, Thank you know you. what? Thank you. We uh, it, it, we're recording ahead, so guess who I spent Thanksgiving Eve with? Thanksgiving. So this is this, this is December 9th, but we are actually recording this uh, the the uh, Green Saturday, the two days after uh, Thanksgiving. Who did you spend Thanksgiving? You went with your normal uh, pineapple upside down the cake. The, and did the yes, whole thing. The pineapple right? upside. The, the the freelancers thing fell apart at the last minute. It did. No. <laughs> yes, it did. What yeah, happened? I think, some, I think someone got a job, and I think someone got evicted from their apartment. Oh, dear. Where, where the meeting was. Oh, uh, anyway, no. It was okay. Oh, I no. still made pineapple uh, pineapple upside-down cake, made sweet potatoes. Well, what did you do for Thanksgiving, uh, made, though? Did you, did you go to... Well, I, I made a deal with Dennis. I said, I'll tell you, you uh, I haven't cooked a turkey in 30 years. You make a turkey, I'll make the trimmings. Oh, that's so, good. So you, you, you still parceled it out, and then you had... Still parceled it out. Did you invite anybody but, over? It was just the two of you. No, the dogs. <laughs> Fairway ran. <laughs> they came upstairs. Okay. Fairway ran up, and Maggie was up there already. Oh, that sounds. But very Joe Balonis, who's uh, in the chat room, JoJo, I, maybe Myra can get his uh, his handle by the, in the next few minutes. Uh, he had a pre-Thanksgiving dinner at a place called Isabella's, which is at 79th in Columbus, which is right 
out, uh, outside their door, they are blowing up the Macy's Day balloons. Wow. And Isn't that kind I of make it hard to have to, a parade if you blow up all the balloons? Well, oh, you mean inflate. inflate. Oh, okay. Inflate the balloon. I'm sorry. I had this image of Las Vegas where they blow up the casino. <laughs> you've been playing too many. You've been playing Angry Birds too, too <laughs> they many. They blow up the balloons. Oh, that's cool. No. So there's actually a spot where they blow up the balloons? Oh, yeah. Blocks of, you know, those balloons are enormous. They they close What do they put in them? Helium? Helium. There is a helium truck that must be 80 feet long. Wow. And uh, the thing, I watched some of the parade, and it said that Macy's is the second largest user of helium right besides the United States government. Yeah. You know, there yeah. was the talk for a while of a helium shortage. Oh, I have a lot in the cellar. So if you need any. Stockpile it, helium. Yeah. The I think it's leaking out there. The only, yeah, I was going to say, the only problem is you all talk like this after a while. Exactly. Exactly. The helium, well, anyway. Helium, I guess, I is not in the shortage to, anymore. But anyway, so who Eva. did you see? Eva. You mean my Eva? Your Eva, and I sat next to Eva and Will. Oh, my 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 nephew and my sister. Yeah, exactly. And they exactly. were watching the balloons get inflated. Inflated. Oh, she that must have been so to, uh, fun for them. From Providence. To, did did, uh, did Grady, his uh, little brother, come too? You know what, Grady was there, but Grady uh, evidently got car sick on the way down, and so um, I've forgotten Eva's husband's name. Barry. Barry. Uh, had to go home with. Oh, poor little Grady! So he missed the inflation of the inflation. Balloons. But Eva and Will were there, so it was great. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Anyway, and and two people from the meetup said they could stay at at their house, so I got her out of my house for a couple of days. Anyway. <laughs> That's very nice. Of that. and, uh, having that meetup. <laughs> so she's still in town. She's still in town. She said, oh, you know, I said, you do you have to run? And she said, no, I didn't <laughs> quite mean live here, but that's, <laughs> that's what she I'm doing. loving it here under the desk. It's very cozy. Yeah, it's, yes. yeah, it's great. Yeah. So anyway, we had fun. Well, good. I'm glad you had a great Thanksgiving. I'm sorry that the, the freelancer's dinner fell through. That's the first time in 15 years. That's really much. Yeah, 30. 30? Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, exactly. Wow. But it was, it was fun. We, I made, uh, you know, basically making a... Candy sweet potatoes is not unlike making pineapple upside down cake. It's all about the sugar. It's, yeah, exactly. It's all, yeah. Instead of uh, cake, you just substitute marshmallows and you pretty much have candy sweets. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you had a good Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, and yours was good too? Mine was good too. In fact, by the time you're, when this airs, I will be uh, on the 9th in Paris. Oh, as we, yeah. as you listen to this show, ladies and gentlemen, I am right now uh, streaking the Eiffel Tower. Wow! So just watch for the news reports. And what are you doing? Are you uh, lecturing? Or? I am going to get this. So this is a conference about the internet in Paris, called. Oh, Le they have it over there too. They have it over there too. It's called Le Web. Oh, wow. You know, so did you have to learn French so you could do, say yeah. that? Uh, le internet is tray exciting. That's about, that's about it right there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I, uh, my, uh, my talk was uh, yesterday, as you hear this, and uh, okay. then tomorrow I fly back. But, I, you know, five days in Paris, you can't knock that. No. Yeah. Probably have some dinners. They have McDonald's over there and Arby's. Yeah, you know, the McDonald's in France is a little weird. Yeah. The secret sauce is different. R La secret sauce. La, La secret sauce La secret. is <laughs> very different. It's not, uh, it doesn't taste the same. So if you expect, you know, they do call it Le Big Mac. Oh, they do. Okay. Yeah, okay. but it's not the same as Notre Big Mac. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They, the well, sauce I'm learning is, a lot. Oh, yeah, it's very continental. Yeah. I'm learning almost too let me, much. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a passport? Yeah. Do you? I only I have a passport because of you. What? I made you go out of, out of the country? <laughs> uh, Montreal. Oh. Vancouver. To, to go to, They're to, not to, exactly the you, fir, 51st and 52nd st state. You know. Sort of are. Oh, so when you came up to Canada, you you actually had to get a passport to come see the well, I had a passport the from the mad days, but oh, it okay. expired. You know, games used to take us all over right, the world. Right, right. Uh, but then when, uh, you know, I'm faithful. When when uh, Tech TV, you said they're going to Canada, I said, you're going to Canada, I'm going to Canada. That was nice of you. 
That was yeah, nice. And the government said, you're not going to Canada unless you get a passport. <laughs> yeah, well, it was after, it's you know, since it's uh, after 9-11, it used to be you, you could just, you know, yes, hold absolutely. up your birth certificate. But now you really, you do have to have a passport. Yeah, hold yeah. up a birth certificate. Anybody. Yeah, yeah. Is that a birth certificate? Yes. I know oh, a no, U.S. No. citizen. Yeah, that was all you needed. Take those 10 people with you. Anyway, I have a very unique, probably one of a kind gadget. Mm. Which is kind of it's expensive, but interesting. Uh, it's another gadget I found at the Wired store, one of those pop-up stores that's uh, going to be operating between now and the day after Christmas uh, at Fourth and West 4th and Broadway, if you are in New York City. It is the USB typewriter. Hmm. Okay, now, and they're at usbtypewriter.com. So, Leo... You can take an old favorite typewriter that you like, an old Royal Portable or any machine like that, send it out to these people, and for $399, they rewire it wow. so that it's still a typewriter, but it has a USB dongle on it. If you now want this typewriter to be your keyboard... For your computer, you just plug it in like a regular keyboard. This is great. It's just really amazing. And at the demo, uh, at the wired store thing, they they sit an iPod, an iPad rather, in the carriage. Doesn't come with the iPad. Oh and if my you want, goodness! I'm you looking. They have the, like an old Royal typewriter. Yes, it's a right, and I, then they let me type on it. Uh, and you hit the carriage it, it, return, it looks like you yes, do. Yes, yes. And the funny thing is I couldn't find shift up and shift down, but it, it really is a riot. And you did, when you order it, you tell them you want to use it with an iPad, and there's a little extra uh, little dongle that they put in there. That, so if do you, you have supply your own the typewriter, or do they no, supply? It, 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 they do it a bunch of ways. If you really know your way around a soldering iron, you can buy plans, the kit, and the oh. parts to do it for $59. Oh. But on the website, the guy says you really have to be medium to high techy and very good at building kits. So you get a sensor board. You have to cut and put it in there. Do all that. Oh, this is this is non-trivial. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. If you have your own favorite typewriter, he'll convert it to a USB typewriter for $399. Or you can go on their website and he has a bunch of old typewriters that you pick one out and then it takes, you have to order it and it takes a month for him this to is, do this. This is so cool. <laughs> it's a great idea, isn't this. it? So know, they're basically this. putting little contacts on each of the, uh, the keys that yes. then signal to the chip that uh, this key has been struck and then the chip feet, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, it was funny because fortunately I, there was a very nice person walking uh, walking around with us at, at the event. And, and I said, oh, is this like a tribute to old technology? And she said, no, you can use this to type on an iPod. And I said, what are you kidding me? She said, no, hang on, let me go get an iPod for you. So she put the iPod in the carriage and there are you typing away. iPad, the most, iPad. The, yeah. My, uh, iPad, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I'm sorry. Well, I'm I, the problem was I was typing on an iPod. There really, you go. Really. Not really much to do there. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, they've, uh, they've got a little video on their on their website, usbtypewriter.com, of uh, of uh, an old, I mean, a really old royal typewriter, yes, and it, yes. it's the very strangest thing I've ever seen. And it it <laughs> it's coming out on the yeah. iPad. And uh, on my channel, YouTube Mad Maddest, you can actually see the typewriter I was typing on, which was another royal, but a slightly newer royal. I would love event. an IBM Selectric. Yep. I don't think it would oh, work that, with that. Yeah. It's got to no, be a manual probably, typewriter, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it has to be manual. He sells these um, He sells these on Etsy. This is an example of a guy who's come up with a crazy A business. bizarre idea, right? Yeah, but I think he's probably doing pretty well. Look at this. I love it that you could slot the iPad into there. <laughs> yes, I know. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. I know. It's like two totally different technologies. What? 70 years apart? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, ironically, we're still using the uh, uh, the you know, QWERTY the, keyboard, which is yeah, you know, QWERTY, eight, yes, exactly. 19th century I mean, technology. The old, the first, some of those royal typewriters are. Oh, yeah. I love the look. 
Yeah. Boy, I like that. That's that's a gift for somebody, the, the person who has everything. Uh, are you hinting because you ain't getting it from me? Oh. No, don't send me one. I'll make my, I'm going to make one myself. By I'll hand. buy you the kit. I'll buy you the kit. <laughs> How much is the kit? You know, the kit's $59. I'll buy 59 that. 59 bucks is nothing. Nothing. I'll, nothing. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. So really, I'll send you some wire. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, you, 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 you know everything. I'll just send you a bale of wire and say, Leah, make this into one of those USB keyboards. Yeah. You supply the solder. And we'll supply yeah, I'll the send wire. you solder and wire. <laughs> <laughs> then you're on your own. Okay. I think this is a great idea. The USB typewriter. Keep at usbtypewriter.com. It doesn't have to just be an iPad. It could be anything, really. Yeah, oh, yeah. You can hook it to a regular computer. Can, Any it, USB, yeah. yeah. Really neat. Hey, before we, uh, before we get to the letter of the week, I do want to mention the fabulous Ford Edge. I know you don't own a car, but maybe we could get you into a Ford. Yeah, I'm buying that dashboard. Remember I told you I saw the, the mock-up? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get he, that. He wants the Ford Sync without the car, and the only way to do it is to use the, uh, the mock-up they use at the Ford exhibit. Yeah, at the at the various trade shows, do get it if you get you know if you're anywhere where you could see. I think the best thing is probably to go to a Ford dealer. I bet you we have. I bet you we have people going into Ford dealers saying, "Not I want to test drive a car, but I would like to test drive the Ford Sync, please, sir." <laughs> I bet. I bet the Ford Edge is is uh, if you want a little bit of a bigger car with more capacity and the best second row legroom in its class. You got to take a look at the Ford Edge. Beautiful vehicle, um, fluid aerodynamic shape on the outside and the inside. Uh, just the cleanest, nicest instrument panel, center stack, the door trim, the four console, uh, floor console. They're all beautiful. The ambient lighting. They have an available panoramic vista roof with a forward panel which tilts or opens fully, and then a fixed rear skylight. So I don't know of any car where you get a skylight for the second row passengers. This is the this is the vehicle for people who like to sit in the second row like to be driven around in style. It's got the incredible uh, V6 engine that Ford has pioneered, giving you an, uh, the best-in-class uh, highway mileage. EPA estimated 27 miles a gallon. There's also a sport package with 284 pounds, foot-pounds of uh, torque. Uh, and, of course, the 2011 uh, Ford Edge features available My Ford Touch, which is the sync even more. It, uh, it connects you to your vehicle and completely intuitive ways using your smartphone touch and voice commands for entertainment climate control phone navigation beautiful eight inch touch screen in the center stack but you also get two five-way switch pads on the steering wheel and two more lcd screens right behind the wheel so which are programmable so you really it's it's this is the most technological car ford makes i want you to take a look at it and now you can go to madrid with a new 2012 Ford Focus Global Test Drive. Your chance to get a sneak peek at the new World Ford, the Focus, coming out early next year. There are a three-model lineup, a five-door hatchback, a four-door sedan, and a five-door wagon. The 2012 Focus features the fastest, latest parking technologies, Active Park Assist, which I tried on the Flex. It was so much fun. It's kind of weird. This is on a Focus. I mean, if the rear, rear it's got a rear-view camera. Torque vectoring control, hugging the curves, new fuel-efficient engines, completely updated for 2012. And, of course, the voice-activated sync with my Ford Touch, including the 8-inch touchscreen, just like the Edge. To get a sneak peek at the all-new 2012 Ford Focus, go right now to twitfordfocus.com. One word, twitfordfocus.com. Submit a video saying, this is why I want to test drive the 2012 Focus. If you're selected, Ford will not only take you to Madrid to test drive the 2012 Ford Focus, which I like. You and a friend. But you'll also get to donate $10,000 to the charitable cause of your choice. Half a million dollars in total will be donated. This is a great thing. You'll be going to Spain's National Institute for Aerospace Technology, where the Spanish military tests space rockets. Twit Ford Focus.com. I'll take you to the Facebook page where you can submit your video. Tell Ford which charitable cause you'd like to support and why you should be going to Madrid to test the new 2012 Focus. I, I, I haven't uh, driven one yet, but I have been in one and seen it. It is a gorgeous. This is, this is going to be the car that gets so much attention. TwitFordFocus.com.
I'm I'm pretty excited. I would Madrid. I've never been to Madrid. I love Spain, but I've never been to Madrid. I would love to do this. Twit Ford Focus. Uh, dot uh, com. That was the little uh, little jingle that Johnny Rotten recorded for us many, many moons ago. <laughs> and now here he is, Dick Rotten. Yes, and our letter is from Jan Goodwin, and he writes, I have a gadget review suggestion. You know, cordless power tools make life easier. I have a particular affinity for those made by Milwaukee. As such, I subscribe to their monthly newsletter. Look at the product they just announced. The M12 cordless heated jacket had me laughing <laughs> to tears. The M12 product line is cordless tools built and powered around their barrel-shaped 12-volt battery. The line includes drills, impact drivers, pipe cutters, electric meters. Now the same battery powers a jacket. Three temperature settings makes suggests to me that if they have a 12-volt battery pumping maximum temperature and you're still chilled to the bone it's time to call ice fishing a day if this jacket lives up to milwaukee's nothing but heavy duty mantra it needs an angry wind iceberg peppered hudson river perf performance testing under the crushing weight of a barbaric january lung collapsing bone shattering arctic storm aboard the uss gizwiz the defining test, will the jacket's 12-volt battery jumpstart Dick's outboard engine? If it passes, <laughs> if it passes Gizwitz certification, the jacket will be known as approved for Leo's Upper New York State Cold Weather Travel Kit. Mahalo, I guess he's in M-A-H-A-L-O. That's Hawaii. Yeah, that's Hawaiian, Hawaiian for whoa. Whoa, Jan, Y-A-N-N. -N. Jan, uh, I checked it. It's 170 bucks, but depending on my Christmas bonus, I don't think I'll be testing it. <laughs> but now, if I run across one of those or someone from Milwaukee, I'll ask to borrow one. And in January, I will go out and see if I can stay warm in New York City's cold. That'll I'll take it on test. the Hudson River. That'll yeah, that be will test. be a test. Yeah. Dick, we're out of time. Right. Uh, well, actually, we're not out of time. This show can go on, as many know, for hours without a And it has. A well, it you has. know what, Leo? You know what I say about that? What do you say about I'll, that? I'll be here. D-A-I-L-Y. It's the Daily Giz Whiz. It's the Daily Giz Whiz. It's the Daily Giz Whiz. It makes its own gravy. Yeah.